An open letter addressed to President Muhammad Buhari has been published. This time it is by former Senate President Ayim Pius Ayim. He opined that the quest for solutions to the country's problems must involve the citizens. He stated that in a democracy, no action is deemed successful or completed until the approval of the people is given. And the People's Democratic Party, PDP, have called for the creation of a national border protection force to secure Nigeria's borders. The PDP national chairman, Uche Sekundus, gave the advice saying the force would protect Nigeria's borders from the activities of terrorists and bandits. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Diron Udeyemi. He is Deputy PDP Public uh, Publicity Secretary. And, of course, we have Ambrose Iboke, who's a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm happy to be here. Great. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Durant. Um, Nigeria does have the customs service. We have the immigration service. We have border control. Um, why do we need another one to protect the borders of the country? I mean, because if we do need to establish that, then it means that we need to fire all the guys who work in the immigration and the guys who work with the customs, right? Correct me, please. Uh, we have the police and the military and the um, uh, special security. When Amoteku and all these uh, state security apparatus were created. So what we are saying in essence about the border uh, security is that it is not that they are not in existence, but to what extent have they been effective? In view of the fact that most of the blames about this insecurity often come from the presidency, that it is people from uh, Chad, from Niger, from all these neighboring countries that are perpetrating these crimes. So if that is their own explanation, if that is their own excuse, and it's not out of place for us to say, then what it shows is that you don't have confidence or you see there has been security breakdown and lapses. In our, in, in our borders. So the best thing to do is to create another avenue, another security outfit that will complement the efforts of this uh, border, some, uh, border patrol. Because we have the police, we have the CID, we have the SSS before EFCC was created. It's just to complement what they have if their excuse has been that the people perpetrating this criminality are from neighboring countries. It's as simple as that. Interesting. I'm going to come back to you because I have more questions probing uh, this idea uh, from the PDP. But I'm going to you, Mr. Ambrose Igboke. Um, the Senate president here is asking, um, of course, he started by narrating that he has had an audience with Mr. President. He was asked to send some ideas which he doesn't or isn't sure that those ideas got across to Mr. President. Should the conversation that we're having right now be about the messenger, because people have already started giving him fire, should the, the conversation be about the messenger or the message bearer? I mean, is the APC or the Buhari government in a position to point fingers or pick and choose as to who is coming up with ideas that could help us solve our problem right now in the interim? Well, uh, for those who are cutting, uh, uh, let's cut some flags for the former Senate president, uh, who was also the secretary to the federal government during Jonathan's time. Uh, some people are accusing him that he's proffering solutions, which they didn't do when they were in power. But the situation are not the same. When the PDP was in power, the Boko Haram insurgency was just at incubation stage. Remember, Yusuf, the founder of Boko Haram, was still going around uh, preaching his own brand of religion and also uh, still being uh, in the vicinity of uh, habitations of, uh, of, of urban areas. Then, uh, in 2009, the things changed, and we started having agitations along that line. We finally snowballed into the Boko Haram uh, insurgency we are having. And at the time the APC was coming together, the tool of propaganda they used against the Jonathan government 
It was that they were going to defeat Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. That Nigerians believed them because their presidential candidate was a former general who routed the Tsenis State in the early 80s. Now, the APC wrote on that promise that the Jonathan government was not serious about Boko Haram and they had the magic wand. Six years down the line, it has not happened. And it has worsened. So if uh, a highly placed person, like the former third citizen of Nigeria, and a former secretary general, a former can come to the president to proper solutions. Remember, this kind of individual, she also has some high intel. He's not just an ordinary citizen. So he may have his own sources of intelligence gathering. And when he brings that to fall, we should not start playing politics with it. Mm. So it is not about the PDP, it's not about the APC, it's about all the person. What does the message say? If the message is factual and can solve our problem, this government should stop playing politics with everything that comes with uh, the opposition. After all, when they were in opposition, Nigerians believed them, and Nigerians worked with them. Hmm. So if, uh, if a, a, a political party is in opposition and telling them things, they should also listen. Okay, I, I just want to push you a bit further because uh, in his statement, he mentioned every little thing that we're experiencing right now. He talked about you know, looking at every region in the country and all of the pockets of violence and the agitations. He's, he mentioned the fact that we, uh, the ethnic tensions, uh, Boko Haram, who have gotten as far as Niger State. Um, and he talked about the fact that all of these things are an apparent threat to our nationhood. So I'd ask you, is Nigeria's nationhood really under threat? Or is the media like... Um, um, it was contained in a statement yesterday uh, uh, on the issue of press freedom. Is the media and the opposition, which is the PDP, making it seem so? Uh, being that the government is talking about playing up issues and blowing it out of proportion. I understand the media very well because I eat, drink, and sleep media. I'm a media scholar. I've been a practitioner for many years. In the basic definition of news if you read mass communication class it will just tell you that news is a report of correct events the media does not manufacture uh, do not manufacture news stories they report what happens actualities therefore if what is prevalent in the country or what is prevailing in the environment is nothing banditry, terrorism, uh, wars, uh, going to communities to wipe out a whole village, killing of students, and all sorts of uh, bring down that shit in Nigeria. Then you will not blame the media for reporting those things. Therefore, accusing the media of hyping this event is the most unfortunate. It means the people who are accusing the media are actually abdicating from their responsibility to ensure that those things don't happen in the first place. If students were not kidnapped in Greenfield University, for example, would the media say students were kidnapped? If three of them were not killed, would the media say uh, three of them were not uh, were killed? The Kagan students, the kidnappings on the road, the, uh, the head that's uh, the, the head that's going into town to bust settlement and kill people. Are those people suggesting that the media should uh, block out these events and report Nigeria that we are on Eldorado? So the media will continue to report what happens in the society because they are the watchdog. Okay. Suggesting otherwise will be to make the, uh, the media liable to not holding the government accountable. Hmm. That okay. is the meaning of the media, the first estate of the realm. Okay. You have to watch dog. Okay. So you cannot tell the media to keep quiet. All right, back to you, Mr. Durant. Um, why does it seem, because I keep asking many people this question, but let me ask you because you're the opposition. And there are, be, there are people who have asked 
you know, or have suggested that the PDP is not doing its job, that you're not alive to your responsibility as, um, you know, an opposition compared to the type of hit you were getting when you were in power. But my question is, why does it seem that the yearnings and the obvious plight of Nigerians all seem to fall on deaf ears? Even the push and shove that you have given Mr. President or the presidency lately seems not to be moving anything. It's quite unfortunate when people say this, and I quite I disagree with that impression. You agree with me that a P a APC came into government through propaganda and series of lies they told, they told Nigeria. And uh, if you tell a lie to get to power or to get to an office, you will need 1,000 of it to sustain that office. And that is exactly the problem APC is having today. They promised the people of Nigeria to wipe out corruption. But we all know that corruption is now the main thing in Nigeria. They promised to defeat Boko Haram within three months. Today, Boko Haram is reigning while the president appears or says he is ruling. But where is PDP in all of this? You should have been there occupying, doing stuff, making sure that your voices are being heard. But then it seems like just, the PDP just, has just been because, on a long sleep and slumber. Just yesterday. Go ahead. Just yesterday, the national chairman addressed a world uh, press conference where he highlighted all the problems of Nigeria where he talked about the problem we are facing as a country, where he highlighted the problem caused by APC and this administration. If you are expecting us to act the way they acted before they came to power, then you are not getting it right. We are Nigerians, and Nigerians are feeling the brunt. They are feeling the problems now created by APC. We are all opposition. It's not only PDP that is, in, that is the opposition party now. Every individual in this country is opposed to this administration, and that is more than enough. Hmm. What the, the question you should ask is, where are the civil society in this? Where is NLC in this? Where are all the people that assisted or helped this administration to come into power? They have all gone silent. It's only the PDP that are addressing... Including what, the PDP, uh, I might what, say. It's only the PDP that are shouting. And for the mere fact that each Nigerian are feeling the hardship, it's more than enough to say that we are all the, in the opposition, not only the PDP. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask almost the same question to you, um, Ms. Igboke, um, but I'm going to put it differently. Why is it so difficult for Mr. President to address Nigerians and give them a sense of hope somewhat? I mean, is it out of place to, to, to ask for our president to act like he understands what we're facing at the moment? Is it a bit too much to ask for? Before I dive into that, I will tell my colleague uh, on the panel that the PDP should stop standing sanctimonious. The problem of Nigeria did not start in APC. So we need to put that to correct perspective. It's a continuum. But the, the, the government, the federal government, has taken it to a very new level of a, a, a very solid state when it comes to the issue of security. And that has to be, Nigerians are unanimous about that, that something urgently needs to be done. And according to the question you just asked me, the main thing, one of the main things to be done now is that the president needs to talk to us. We don't hear from our president. Our citizens are being killed. Uh, villages are being converted to uh, forceful allegiance to uh, aliens. Some terrorists and insurgents are hoisting their flag in many local governments of Nigeria. And then we have not seen our president. We, our president has not talked to us. But when a train crash happens in India, 
or uh, there is a, a, a killing in uh, America. You will issue a statement, you know, condoning with this country and that country and that country. Meanwhile, you have not issued any statement to condone. In fact, the, the statements after every killing from the president is so monotonous, it's just like a copy and paste. So where is the humanity? Where is uh, the conscience? What, what, what kind of people are we? That our people are being killed and we don't, we don't you know, seem to show empathy. So uh, I heard the, the presidential spoke some time ago last year saying that, oh, uh, the, the, if the president speaks to the people, will solve the problem? That's what we call the empathy. When people hear from their leader, they take succor in, the, in, in that promise. They still read the media, feel their pain, and they see it. They are comforted. They become hopeful. But when you keep them in total silence, they become disenchanted. They start wondering if they are true citizens of this country. They start wondering if they are in the right place. They start wondering if God has not cost them to be citizens of this country. Mm. Okay. People have had in traumas every day. And then we are here talking about uh, what the, uh, the propriety of the, uh, of the president talking to us or not. And some people are actually defending that. The president ought to talk to Nigeria. Okay. And tell us his plan. All right. Five. And tell us what he's going to do to tackle the terrorists that are terrorizing us in this country. Okay. All right, because we're running out of time. Quickly, finally, Duran, I, I want to ask quickly. Um, the former Senate president is recommending that there be a, a commission of sorts that would deal with the situation that is at hand. But we've set up so many commissions. We've done all kinds of, I mean, and some of them are gathering dust. Why should we be looking at another proposed commission? Um, I mean, considering this is not the first of the series of open letters that have been written, the former president, Olusha Gobwasanjo, has been the chief executive of writing open, open letters. Do you see the president bulging or even taking any of these recommendations whatsoever quickly as we wrap up? I don't see the president taking any action about letters being written to me. This is not the first time that ideas and suggestions be put forward for the betterment of this country. But the ego is there that because he's the president and because it is APC, they are not ready to take ideas from any individual or any uh, corporate organization. And that is the reason why we are still having these problems. The only advice the president took recently was the fact that we told him that if you cannot secure this country, it is no pride if you seek help and assistance from foreign countries. And I think we just did that. Okay. But I'm not sure, and I don't think the president has a listening here about what Nigerians is. Instead, we have people who are defending whatever is, is lukewarm action from the presidency. So unfortunate. All right. Well, I want to say thank you very much. Dear Ondeyemi is the PDP deputy spokesperson. And uh, Ambrose Igboke is a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, I will be giving you my take. We'll be right back. Here's my take. The screams, the cries, and the groanings of Nigerians seem to be falling on deaf ears. Our throats are beginning to hurt. And our voices are cracked from endlessly asking our leaders to save the soul of this country. Pointing to the, the, the elephant that is in the room, and they all seem blind to this particular elephant. The Nigerian state is going through a rough patch as we speak, and that's unrivaled because um, it's, it's one that we must not toy with. It's, an, it's a situation that's very sensitive and dicey, and we cannot delay action on this particular one. So dear Nigerians, we must not be weary. We must not um, you know, sit back and relax. We must apply more pressure. 
we must keep reiterating to our leaders that it is their jobs to keep us safe. How can we rest when we're all unsafe? When we can't even be certain that we won't be attacked, we won't be kidnapped or robbed? More than ever before, the powers of the office of the citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria must be wielded. Our leaders must work for us, yes, not the other way around. They must do everything within their powers to keep us safe, or else we'll show them the door. It is our right, and we deserve it. I am Mariana Kong, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.